by far one of my favorite coaches that we've taken on at Carrot Corner is Sebastian Wen. If you haven't seen Sebastian talk about the game, then today you're in for a treat because he's brought four really distinct hands, each with its own flavor. The Pocket Fives hand that we begin with features a flop four bet and is one of the most bizarre and fascinating action sequences I've ever seen. Nine six of hearts, which we do second, actually involves a blunder, a self-confessed river mistake from Sebastian. No matter how good you get at poker, there's always room for improvement. Pin eight of clubs, which we do third, features a very cool example of just being hyper aware of ranges in a certain spot and finding a river value shove that many people may miss, but one that is totally mandatory. And finally, pocket forest, we finish up with a bread and butter spot against the fish on the river in a three bet pot, where you simply have to call where I know that many of you fold. Sebastian is of course one of the coaches that's launching on Carrot Corner on the 22nd of April when we go live with subscriptions. Check out the site after this video. Super excited about it. But first, let's chat with Sebastian and review these hands. All right, welcome Carrot Corner coach Sebastian. How's it been going? How's poker? How's life? Hey Pete, life is good. Life is busy. Poker has been a bit of a, a break-even stretch, but uh, that's okay. Um, and I've uh, been using that as an opportunity to grow, maybe get some coaching from a, a even higher stakes player. It's really fascinating to hear that because so many people, when they're running bad, they want to cast all the blame elsewhere, right? So easy to say, I'm running bad, like I know I'm running bad, and therefore there's a leap from I'm going through bad variants to therefore none of it is my fault. And it's like, well, if you are having a break even 100k hands like you mentioned before we pressed record there and you're normally a winner that performs better than that then yeah you are running bad that doesn't mean there's not still room to grow and it's awesome to hear that you know even as a fairly accomplished player and coach it's not beneath you to seek tuition and help from from someone you consider better than yourself so that's really awesome totally yeah the only thing i would change is is have the same desire for for help and growth even when i was crushing it and just running the game <laughs> okay but definitely either way you should just be trying to get better and improve and, and ask for help from people so uh, yeah yeah for sure so you're going to be making a course for carrot corner or a celibate a part of the syllabus part of the subscription series library i should say and it's going to be 10 episodes and it is called road to pro so subscribers are going to have that to look forward to we are launching on april 22nd guys don't forget What's that going to be about? I know you've sent me like a draft of a syllabus, but do you want to tell the audience a bit about that series? Sure. So there's a lot of um, strategy content out there, and I'm going to include some of the things that I think were most informative from a strategic perspective on my road to pro. And um, the way I see it, and people have said this in, in different ways, you've said this as well, but basically I think the three things that are important um, in poker are to understand mass data analysis or like how population tends to play, understand theoretical perspective, like a GTO perspective, and being able to reason through a hand. So I want to break down how to think about um, any hand from all three of those angles at any given time, rather than just one of those or just two of those. And then I also want to spend some time on the things that are almost never talked about. So um, obviously like mental game, but also just things like table selection and like a really nuanced strategy versus fish, which is the most important part of the game um, and and things like that, which I just feel like yeah, they're a little bit more common sense, but a lot of people don't understand them very well. And um, and they're still fresh in my mind as things that I really wish I knew earlier because I haven't been a pro for 10 years. So um, yeah, that's, that's going to be part of the course as well. Nice one. This fives hand is just like an absolutely bizarre, crazy hand where I think I'm going to get a little bit of hate, but I feel like I'm at least fine with it. I've asked like seven pros about it and I've split the jury. Actually, most most are in favor of the way I played the hand, but mm -hmm. the highest stakes player didn't like the way I played the hand. So <laughs> we'll have to decide. Um, but they each have different approaches and different personalities. So it's interesting to see how you can split the jury that way. It's really interesting as well to hear that like if a hand is complex, weird, unusual, even a jury of high stakes players are still gonna they're not gonna have that unanimous verdict i think a lot of people yeah. out there might think well once you get to a certain level you just solve everything but poker is super murky it's really unclear and i think like the better you get sometimes the more you actually find yourself admitting that you just have no idea what's going on you need to really like take it slowly okay so pre-flop here we cold called fives which is obviously so don't okay. try this at home kids just there's a fish in the button so i want them to come along so i flat the cutoff not doing that is a uh, part of my normal game 
It's not like it's bad though from an EV point of view to to flat cut no, off versus not, high but, but it's not very balanced, right? Like I'm not going to build like a really nuanced cut off flatting range. So there's okay. there's no point working that into your game. You'd rather just study three bit pots. So yep. I'm just winging it. Yep. So you're cutting down the the options available and making your life more digestible against regs. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. But the EV gain here is worth it with the weaker player. And they checked us. We elect to start with a small bet here. What are your thoughts on flop? So this is the 200 zoom ACR pool. Aggro pool, man. And not too bad. Like there's a lot of fish in the pool, but the big difference I've noticed is people just, they're very aggro. So, um, you know, you could start out with a big bet here uh, as well, but I'm, I think that I'm just going to get check raised at a pretty high frequency here. Um, like I have a lot, I should have a lot. They might think I have a lot of like pocket sixes, pocket sevens, pocket fours. Um, and I just expect this size to outperform. Um, yeah. Yep, I think when you start going big here, people are less studied against it, a bit more shell shocked, less likely to construct the raising range in a in an aggressive way. And um, that makes a lot of sense. I think for people playing twenty five and L or whatever, you might just want to go big and put your opponent more squarely on a range of showdown value that's just planning on check calling rather than things that are planning on check raising you. Yep. And we get so, check raise. Yeah. If we were uh, not this steep. I would strongly consider call, but I think this deep, I just want a cooler deuces. And so I'm just going to three bet. Yeah, makes a bit more sense to build the small three bet range at this stack depth. I think 100 big blinds is just absolutely no purpose to it against this check raise sizing. I have no idea how mandatory it becomes at this deeper stack depth, but I'll take your word for it. Seems reasonable. And we can't really see that because of the weirdness of the replayer, but Villain, that's so bizarre. Villain went to how many big blinds? He went pretty small, but he is four bet the flop to, I think, like, you know, a 45, 44 big blind, something like that. Right. Okay. I've never seen like a flop four bet before, I don't think. And I've also never seen <laughs> this, the replayer doesn't know what to do. <laughs> I've never seen the replayer do this. It's just like there's not normally that third column of chips there. So it's yeah. like hiding the amount, but yeah, that says you've broken the the poker tracker here, Sebastian. This is hilarious. It definitely broke my brain as well. I was like, "What in God's name is going on in this hand?" <laughs> Already, I've never played a pot before where the flop has been four bet. So welcome to ACR Zoom. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like this has to get pretty leveling war heavy. Like, if you have kings here. Is there any reason to do this, given that your value range is betting almost any turn at almost 100% frequency for this line? Like, this is kind of what I'm wondering. Like, is there any reason to do this for value, for villain? Right. So your, your first thought is under bluffed, and then your second thought is no hand makes sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, my, so. my, my main thought is that this is like some kind of... um aggro macho contest now in villain's mind a lot of the time that like there might just be a lot of people who are like sure you've got the value bet when you men click the flop back at me and try and make me fall down my bluffs i'm not having it i'm gonna like this is like high stakes poker circa 2007 or something like you've got yeah. d negs and someone else like patrick antonius or whoever like clicking it back ad infinitum okay so i'm guessing we're gonna call now given that yeah. if there's air in here it'd be a a bit of a shame to just do something silly. Okay, the ace turn. God, well, what the hell? I just don't know what villain's range is. I just have no concept of how to think about this hand. You're going to have to help me here. I have no idea what's going on. So I don't think anyone, including the villain, knows what the hell is going on in this hand. We're 200 big blinds deep. I flatted the cutoff, and we four bet the flop. Nobody has studied this. Um, but when I try to break down what I think, uh, you know, his the hands that make most sense that he would have, are going to be things like mostly gutties. So like ace three, ace four. And then um, I didn't really think about this in game, but a friend of mine pointed out that ace deuce, ace five would make pretty decent uh, flop three bet candidates. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, ace five uh, is to ace five clubs as possible. Yep. Yeah. So um, when he checks the turn, sorry, spoiler. Uh, I just don't, really believe it really looks like he connects with the ace and he just feels like hunting off with top pair feels too wrong um, yeah mm -hmm. but if he's connected with the ace and his hand makes any sense it's going to be two pair or a gut shot plus yeah. the top pair 
And I don't think the people that like three bet you with top set suddenly start checking the turn like those people exactly. didn't three bet the flop in the first place, right? You can do a little bit of inductive reasoning there, the deductive reasoning. So I think we just have a really, really good hand and we just need to put money in in a kind of geometric way. One of your videos actually that's coming out on Carrot Corner pretty soon is the theory of bet sizing. It's not going to be one of the three that we launch with on April 22nd. We've picked those already. And they are the bluff catching roadmap, the pre-flop greed video about how to harvest extra EV pre by thinking about how people play post, which was a really cool one that I liked. And there's one other one on there as well that we picked. I don't remember which one now, but you've got a video um, like this coming out at some point as well um, about the theory of bet sizing and things. So it's a cool one. Um, so this just looks... It looks sufficient at this SBR. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's just it's just like we might have hands here. Like we would go geometric if we only had the nuts here. But we might have hands here that just want to deny a little bit of equity and then shut down on the river. Mm. Um it's it kind of king five, I guess, or something. I don't I don't really know. Um, so that's what leads to this bet size. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I, I think it's fairly going to be a, an indifferent spot EV wise in a solver anyway what size you go here it doesn't strike me as one where you need to go bigger to deny the equity to the hands and villains reigns that you're you're capitalizing from fold equity against or anything so the sizing looks looks pretty good and then the river brings the four straight and villain checks this is like honestly one of the weirdest hands anyone's ever shown me I can't believe we're making a video about this hand why is this hand why does this exist because uh, ACR regs are they put something in their cereal Mm. I don't know. Uh, yeah. So, what do we get value from here, Pete, if we shove? Um, do we think that deuces ever plays this way? It feels a bit weird to like take bottom set and then check the turn having three bet the flop, four, four bet, bet the flop. The flop. Yeah. yeah. What Doesn't I guess I guess Ace Maybe. four suited as possible. And it is because the four is totally unblocked. It is three combos. Four, five, as you said, four, five of clubs or something is is a plausible flop bluff as well. Mm, um, I hadn't even thought about five, four of clubs, yeah. Yeah, six, six, four seems impossible with the turn action sequence, even for that sizing. So I don't think that and gutty. The, and the position hijack open. Yeah. I wonder if the audience has heard of a gutty before. Editor, define gutty. Gutty, noun, a gut shot straight draw, four outs to a straight. Gutty, true love. That's it. Yeah. True EV. True EV. God, what, what have I become? Um, so, <laughs> I, so I think what's feeling really off here to me is the idea that like the, the only sort of target range that we can get value from here is like ace five of clubs, ace deuce, like one of those hands that you mentioned that hit the ace, ace three suited, something like that, that hit the ace and decided it had to call for third pot on the turn some showdown value hand like that and the question is like are people going to call river with that now and i don't know you could argue no but you could also argue that like villain's probably a bit insane just to be taking this line in the first place and then a lot of those people are just anti-folding in general in a pool like acr 200 so i don't know it feels it feels like with the four getting there there's just too much punishment for like being called the times that the other stuff, um, the, the times that villain does have a four. It's a super small range spot, though, and a lot of people looking at this will probably just say this is an absolutely no-brainer jam. What the hell are you doing? You have the nuts, blah, blah, blah. I just don't think it's that that clear, though, to me that that's the case. Yeah. What do you think? So my my theory friend said, seems close. My exploit friend said, good check. And my high-stakes friend, it's like the midwit meme. He's like, mm. you have a set. Why are you checking? <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, that's that's how the, the it broke down. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a really weird effect though, where you're like blocking the the calling range that you beat and unblocking the stuff that beats you, right? And blockers become more and more prominent in small range spots like this. Yeah, I think I'm on board with the chat, but it's it's one of these things where I need to think about it a bit more, and it feels really weird. Yeah, that makes sense. I expected to see some utter dog shit like from flop there. That was my gut. You said your first thought was under bluff. My first thought was dog shit, just because I feel like you just don't have a value range there. So clearly, I was right, chat comment mm -hmm. section yeah right next hand by the way I, i've never seen the hands people bring to me on this channel it's a bit like pun or no pun or something in that sense speaking of punts 
I'm afraid, Sebastian, it's time. I haven't seen this hand either. You've already oh, deemed boy. it a punt. Let's see if I agree or will I try and defend you. Okay. So we flat big blind against UTG. We flop a straight. You can't punt it with a straight, right? Yes, you can, Pete. You okay. find a way. Check raise flop. Uh, I mean, I guess donk's an option as well. Uh, yeah, I I go back and forth on introducing things like donks into my game. Mm. Um, and usually I just land in not doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's another thing to study, isn't it? It's definitely like a an unnecessary thing to build in at low stakes as well. And a lot of the audience we have, we have to remember is playing, you know, one NL, mm -hmm. right? Editor put one NL on the screen and make a big song and dance about it. Now, that's what I call one NL. Every day we're sitting at the table, grinding hard. We're willing and we're able, stuck in the stake, one and out. We're just struggling, broke players, trying to make our way. But the fish keep calling and we're here to stay. And in their hearts, they hold a hero, a legend known as the Carrot Man. Don't like spend an hour doing that though because it'll cost too much money. Anyway, we do see people just see bet like monkeys at low stakes, right? And therefore building donk in a spot where people are just going to see bet all the time anyway is kind of unnecessary and silly. So I'm a big fan of just checking this at like 25 and L. Um, in this game, I don't really care. I think it's okay. So check raise is good. We over about the turn, which seems good. Villain calls. The river is a watch, five. Pete. So we're Pairing the board, we're losing to a few combos of sets. Our hand still strikes me as pretty high EV. I think we still have quite a good hand here. Or what are we gonna do here that's that's so terrible? We go all in. Okay, so villain's range we're getting here is gonna be what? Some boats, some stuff like overpair, some 5x. Is this just a polarization mistake? Like, is it the case that if we do this with this hand, like, we just get called yeah, exactly. by 5x now that called turn because he has 5, 6, 5, 4 from turn and 5x of spades is unblocked and possible. And then, like, he doesn't call too many combos of, like, nines, for example, or kings or something yeah. in theory. I, I don't think he's going to call uh, a lot of nines or tens or aces or kings. Uh, pocket queens is also also beats us. Um, I think both theoretically and practically, um, this is just, yeah, a polarization mistake. Um, I don't mind bet fold. Uh, you know, maybe 35, well, 45 big blinds and then fold. Um, or block. Or check. But... Uh, this is my confession time that this is the spot that I struggle with the most is out of position fortune reversal because every decision makes me feel exposed. So it's yeah. just one of those spots I feel very naked. And the thing is, if I if I really am that upset about people taking advantage of the spot, which I don't even think cognitively they will, then I just should put more traps in my game. Yeah. This is not the hand to fight them back on. It's like just if you're worried about people exploiting your nakedness. Like maybe you should just wear clothes. Boo, you stink! I guess this this is like one of these things I can just see anyone making because it's like, okay, I go all in. It can't be that bad. I have a straight. I must still have quite high equity. And it's also like kind of weird because your value range gets a bit smaller on this river. Um, so you'd think that villain does have to call some hands you beat, but I guess it's just not enough. I guess it's a spot where like, yeah, we do get called by worse, but getting called by some worse hands is not a good yardstick for whether we pick sizing X for value. We want to be 
not just the favorite when called for sizing X, but we want to be like a significant enough favorite that it outperforms the other sizes. So maybe here, if we go block, for example, and we say something like, or we go half pot and we say something like, we have lots of straights, they have no straights, our straights want to go half pot. They are more polarized to non, worse than a straight or bolt. Therefore, we use half pot a lot with the straight region or something like that. That probably means that when called, we're like a big favorite. And it's much better to be like a 68% favorite when called for a half pot. That's probably a bit high, but then it is to be, you know, a 50% favorite for this sizing or even a 53% favorite for this sizing. You could be a favorite against Willen's calling range for this size and it could still be the wrong size because it doesn't perform as well as another size. And that's a really important teaching point, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just part of a larger pattern of... Uh just kind of setting up for a river SPR that looks right and then getting there and it being too thin and not being able to uh, to change my plan. So here's my confession. Yeah, these highly filtered spots are really tough though. So I'm guessing Solver, what did Solver like sizing-wise here? Did you ask it? I think it liked to check, to be honest. Or maybe it was like mixed between check and block. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, was, it wasn't pretty when I, when I looked. Check's interesting. Yeah, I mean... It makes some sense. Like, Villain is going to land here with things they have to bluff. Like, they have some... Like, the thing is, the solver's really, really good at taking whatever the bottom of its range is, knowing its fold equity is super high if you check in a spot like this, and then bluffing. I don't know that humans are that good at that in this game. I don't know if I like check in reality. I think I prefer some smaller sizing to check in reality. But, okay, mm -hmm. solver, whatever you want. We probably ran into it now, then, I'm guessing. Yeah, Obviously. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, look, if he had showed me... Uh, tens, I'd feel like a genius, but I think most often what's going to happen is I'm going to shove and he's going to fold tens. So, like, it's mm -hmm. just, I think it's still a mistake, but yeah. Yep. It's interesting though, because it took me a minute to sort of realize why it was a mistake. Well, when you said it was a mistake, I could work out why, but I don't know if I would have assumed this was a mistake if I just saw it at first glance. Mm -hmm. You just, I just felt on the river like I shouldn't shove and I just did anyways because I didn't know what to do. So, that's, that's like how you could tell. <laughs> well, the clock's yeah. ticking down. There's money on the line, there's pressure, you're not having the best like month or whatever. It's easy just to box yourself into that like fight or flight response and then go, okay, well, this action simplifies everything and I have a straight and there's no more actions and that's in some sense comforting. And that's like sure. the hedonistic grasp of the short term whim, right? Just like grabbing you and making you do what, what makes things less stressful maybe or more comfortable. It's really common. Okay, 10 8 clubs. Opening call by Big Blind. It's like a decent big bet board with the three being low. Quick tip, guys, if the pair is the nine here, you don't want to bet big. If the pair is the three, it's harmless enough. Not advantage-wise that you retain enough of it, you can bet big. Villain raises is a bizarre sizing. We're already putting this guy in the fish camp, though, right, from everything we know. Uh, wait, what, why are we putting this guy in the fish camp? Oh, he didn't start short. Sorry, I thought he'd started short. No, no, I think it's a reg. Okay. Talk us through this bet sizing. This is a, this is something that's not a part of most people's games. So what are you up to here, yeah. Sebastian? Okay, so you want to build a three bet range around um, it, the more your opponent is going to check raise equity driven bluffs and check raise thin for value, the more you're going to want to have a three bet range that contains some thin val some thin value that beats their thin value and some stuff that denies equity from from their hands. Now, it's tough to have equity on this board, but if you have five four of diamonds and they have eight seven of clubs or something like it's not bad to have a three bet range. Um, you you do want to like have some some three bets and in this pool which is check raising very aggressively and three betting very aggressively and apparently four betting very aggressively um you just kind of want to build that in as part of your game because you just don't want them to get to show down uh you know their jack ten of hearts just get a free turn and free river all the time um so yeah you need some bluffs and this is a pretty good candidate without two overs to a nine um but with a lot of uh backdoor equity to a strong hand yeah okay would you make any exception on this board where the equity driven bluffs are like lower equity maybe than they would be on some other boards? Or would you still say here it's just as important to build the three bit range? I'd say just as important because two overs is a lot of equity. Hmm. So, you know, if you have tens or something like and they yep. have queen jack of spades, it's yep. they have a lot of equity. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, cool. And if they're check raising a nine, like 80% of the time, then you want a three bet range as well. 
around with, with strong hands. And with this sizing, we can expect the higher density of 9x, etc., than we would with a bigger size. So it makes more sense to play the 3-bit range against the more merged check raise range. Okay. Yeah, that's that's right. I mean, I just don't really give him credit for a lot of 3x, so it's a 9 almost every time. I buy it. Okay, so it's pretty decently strong turn hand now then. Mm-hmm. He also yeah. called the flop quite quickly, which I don't think he would do if he did somehow have ace three of diamonds. So on the turn, I'm feeling very good about my hand and just setting up for stacks. Yeah, it's, that's a super sick thing to realize. I think here the the thing that's going to grab me and make me mess this up is there's going to be some, like, I want to call it like a vagueness paradigm. It's like, because top pair that's been turned that has a bad kicker is usually a check on nodes that were played like aggressively and highly filtered earlier this must now be a check and then you can almost check your out reflex if you're not switched on and you're not hand reading enough but as you say villain sizing villain's timing the lack of things that beat you here it looks like your hand is basically a vulnerable very high equity hand and we know what those should do they should typically consider value betting so yep. cool value bet yeah, the only hand, like if we have aces here, the only hand that the only thing that makes this different is we lose to 10 9. That's it. Right? We lose to trips either way. We beat every nine either way. And they shouldn't have a lot of random 10x. Like they shouldn't really call the three bet with King 10 of hearts. They might, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. So our, our hand is almost better on this node where we filter out the other 10x hands. It livens up our kicker somewhat that we've done that. Yeah. Let's go. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And now the kicker becomes irrelevant anyway. We have Water River. Full. Yeah, I'm all in. Let's go. Yep. Let's go. Editor countdown. Does villain call us? <laughs> you do get called. I'm going to guess villain's hand. I think villain had the jack nine of spades. You're sick. It's close. You're a sick one, Pete. I got one card. I got the other one, but not the suit. That's some old school stuff right there. Like, how do you just... Anyway. All right. Nice. Well, it's like when Doyle and High Stakes Poker would be like, I don't think you got it. And just like, call. It's like that. Yeah, but how did you not say Queen 9? Like, I don't... I don't know. Weird uh, crystal ball stuff. No, nah, it's just because we live our lives like billions of times at infinitum and then that's what deja vu is and like you've already done you already had this conversation infinity times Sebastian so I just remembering so anyway we have um time for one more hand I would say in this installment we will be back post launch with another episode just like this I think we're reviving here we're getting through some cool concepts so let's keep going for one more don't forget guys do hit the like button do leave us a comment if you like this format because it means we'll do more of it, right? We repeat the stuff that you like and we don't do the stuff that you don't like. So we have people on the channel that you hate. We never talk to them again. We unfriend them and we delete their number from like our WhatsApp directory on our phone if you don't like them. So we called the the small big blind three bet. Can you give me that this guy's a fish or are you going to claim this one's yeah, a reg as well? I can give you that this guy's a fish. I was going to ask the chat, guys, what do we know about this hand so far? How does it change everything about how we think about it going forward? So Only we're fish. not on Twitch. We're just doing YouTube, so you can't. I'm a boomer. I don't know. So, yeah. I mean, GTO fold or GTO mix? Mm, probably like mix, but barely. Mm -hmm. But I'll also, get... Pete, why are we talking about GTO? Just to set the baseline. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't even really think about I think about baseline versus regs and then exploit, but versus fish, I don't even think that way. I, I'm just gonna say like I'm not really folding I don't really have a folding range here, to be honest with you. Um, because there's just gonna be too many nodes where they filter the range later and I can bluff uh profitably. So and with a pair we're ahead of a lot of stuff. So Yeah. They'll probably our, see betting range, right? And our float bet opportunity is going to be so damn good in position because fish are terrified to slow play aces on the turn exactly. or ace queen or something like that so yeah seems good transparency call for transparency call for information check for information information's a good thing just don't like go all in for information because then you can't use it okay and now we're feeling pretty good about life i mean we have a fair degree of showdown here this could this be oh my god could this be a hybrid like, if we bet big here, could ace, king, call, and eights could fold? Is is this a hybrid? Are we also getting, like, a ton of fold equity that's useful? Or is this just a check because it's too far up? 
Mm, I think with the gutty, eights is not going to fold. Oh, my bad. Uh, it does have a gutty. Okay. Fives. We beat fives. But, okay, it's a check. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a check. Yep. My bad. Exposed as a guy that can't read the board and can't see four to a straight. You guys should oh my God, I'm counting on my fingers half the time, dude. Four in the morning. Just a jack, nine, ten. Yeah. Okay, I'm calling. Uh, Let's yeah. this guy. Of course. Trivial call. Yep. But good for for the students, right? How do this is like bottom of our range. How do we call? Our blockers are terrible. Da da da. We actually block the bluffing range, like ace four of diamonds. How does this line make any sense, right? You sound a lot like them, actually. I bet that's how they talk. If he if he went half pot on the flop with Jax, good for him. I don't really think he would. Jax makes sense for his sizing on the river, but not for on the flop. Uh, Ace ten makes some sense, maybe King ten. Um, but you know that's not a lot of combos. And when you think about how much Ace King, Ace Jack, um, even just that five four, Ace five, Ace Ace three. You know, just you don't have to think about it too much. Just flicking the call. If you fold here, guys. Yeah, don't deserve to play the game. That was good. That was the best Scottish accent I've heard from uh, someone across the pond in a long time. Well done. I'm going to guess Villain's hand again. Editor, zoom in. I haven't seen these hands, guys, I promise. Ace King off. God, I'm so good today. I'm on that fire. That one I'm less impressed by. I have yeah, 16 yeah. combinations. No, it was 12 combinations, but shh. Just, just, let's just go with I'm psychic and and all of that instead. I mean, that was clearly the guess, right? If someone has a gun to your head and they're like, what's villain's hand? You have to say it's king off because it's the most likely to three bet pre and it gets you the purest and blah, blah, blah. There's logic behind it. Okay. Um, we are done for today. That was fascinating. Sebastian, we're going to do another one of these in a week or two. It's going to come out probably a week after this one, actually. So do stay tuned for that. How can people get in touch with you for coaching or to find out more about you if they're not actually Carrot Corner um, members and they're watching your videos there? Like, what could they do? Yeah. Um, so I have a website, which is callypokercoaching.ca. I have an active thread on 2 plus 2 Coaching Forum where I have my username, Fran Franak. Um, I uh, am active on like your Discord, so you probably find me lurking there, and you can just uh, add me and message me, and that should be enough ways to get in touch with me. Absolutely. So, would highly recommend Sebastian as a coach. And if you guys want to check out any of our coaches, you can find their bios on Carrot Corner after we launch subscriptions. See you back here on YouTube for more of this juicy hand review very soon. Take it easy, guys. Bye bye.